I made this plasticine maquette of a great horned owl. I wanted to glue some construction timber together into the rough shape of the owl and then carve it to as lifelike a finish as I could manage. Once I cut and glued the timber into the blocks that were the shape of his legs, his body and his wings, I then took him to the local park and started carving. Some of these blocks are very heavy at this stage, but I am able to carve his body, tail and legs fairly quickly. This is my dog Elmo, who likes to chill with me while I'm working. At this stage, I've cut mortise and tenon joints for the legs, tail and wings of the owl. Each wing weighs as much as a heavy table and it's a bit tricky trying to get them into the owl at the angles required. So I come up with a solution. I stand this heavy tree trunk up and brace it against the fence. Then I put hooks on the back of the owl and catches on the tree trunk and then hang his body on the tree. This makes it much easier to place the tail, the legs and the wings onto the body using screws and battens. I can then carve him more easily. I've carved some of his face as you can see here, but at this stage he kind of looks more like a sad penguin. So with a bit of effort, I get him to look more like a focused prey catching owl. At this stage, I'm really quite pleased with how he's looking. The sun's out, Elmo's chilling, the park is looking lovely in the spring sunshine. I've got to trim the wings down to maybe half the thickness of the actual timber. Then shape the feathers using a chainsaw and a disc grinder with a sanding wheel attached to it. Meanwhile, Elmo is doing his own wood shaping. You can see here that I've managed to shape both wings and I also need to do his horns, which I'm finding a little bit tricky but gradually I get them to blend into his head and start to make them more like the feathers that resemble the owl's horns. Then I can take the mostly finished sculpture home and do a little more detailing of his eyes. I'm using a hand chisel and a Dremel tool to do this. Then I'm giving him the Jack Sparrow look with the black eyeliner. And once I've done all the black work on his eyes and beak, I'm using acrylic paint to color in his iris, which I'm hoping to put crystal clear resin on a bit later to give the eyes a more real look. This is my first attempt at airbrushing any of the wooden sculptures that I've previously carved. I'm using a spirit wood dye of various colours like oak, rosewood, mahogany, etc. And it's actually working out quite well. I've used tinfoil here to cover up his eyes so that I don't ruin their paintwork while I'm giving him this base coat of golden oak. Here I'm trying to create the flex of his feathers and I'm also trying to put some shadow where each feather overlaps to give them a more real look. I'm really quite pleased with my airbrushing and I think he's looking quite good. The spirit dye is designed to penetrate the timber so it should last well and the airbrush is much more subtle and forgiving than if I just tried to paint the wood.
I've had to let this clear resin set to almost dry so that when I apply it, it doesn't all run off his eyeball into the corner of his eyes. And it seems to have worked quite well. I'd also been thinking how to make his claws. And I decided to make them out of this plastic morph stuff mixed with just the same paint that I painted his nose with. This worked really well and I can glue them in later when he's installed in the park. There are a few things that I would do differently if I did this again, including his tiger stripes. Um, I think they look a bit like tartan pyjamas, but on the whole, I am very pleased with him. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and take a look at some of my other projects. Hope to see you again. Thank you.